Today we find ourselves at the Stevensville branch of the Fort Erie Public Library. Currently this branch is closed due to the pandemic, but our kids love coming here to find all kinds of books. Libraries are amazing, a building just filled with books, books that are filled with words upon words with so many different stories, facts, histories, poetry, because words are information, information is power, words are powerful. The pen is mightier than the sword. Words have the power to build up and tear down, and that's important to know because this is the summer of love, and we're discovering love languages, the ways we communicate love and care to others. And today we're looking at the sh uh, way of showing love through words of affirmation. So who has ever taken or learned a foreign language? Can you still speak it? Probably not, unless you use it pretty regularly, uh, maybe even every day. For the next five weeks, we're going to study uh, new languages, love languages. Each of us has a love language, a preferred way of communicating and receiving love. We're going to learn five love languages and then try to use them regularly so we can become fluent communicate care. What makes you feel loved and cared for? Oftentimes in school the kids talk about having their buckets filled or filling another person's bucket and we do that by speaking their language of love. If people want to see others thrive and live life in a way that they and us are being filled with love and care, we need to speak love in a way that people understand. So this is the summer of love. Last week we referenced Dr. Gary Chapman, the man who wrote the book on love languages. Literally, he wrote a book called The Five Love Languages. And he says there are basically five different ways that people give and receive love and care for people. These are the five love languages. They're words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. And if a person isn't receiving love and care in a way that is not designed the way they are, uh, we run the risk of that person feeling unloved. It's like the old joke where the wife tells the husband, you never tell me that you love me. And he says, well, I told you that on our wedding day, so if anything changes, I'll let you know. You may very well think and choose and feel that you love someone, but we need to be sure that they know and not only know it, but experience our care and feel it too. I'm sure you've heard the saying, actions speak louder than words. Unless, of course, you're a person who speaks the love language of words or of affirmation. Then the things you say are really important to them. Have you ever tried to communicate with someone who doesn't speak your language? It can be really difficult. A couple years back, Jen and I had uh, just dropped her parents at the airport in Niagara Falls, New York. And we decided to grab some dinner, but we didn't have our credit card and we didn't bring any U.S. money with us. So we stopped at a well-known hotel chain, assuming that they would be able to exchange Canadian funds 
uh, for U.S. funds. Well, Jen came back to me and said they didn't do exchanges, but that if we went down the road a bit, we could exchange it at a place called TAPS. TAPS? I've never even heard of a place called TAPS. It sounded like a bar, so I was keeping my eye out for a bar as we drove down the road. As we were driving, I couldn't find that, and I said to Jen, are you sure that's what she said? Yeah, she said it was called TAPS. I just felt confused and wasn't sure what I was looking for. Well, pretty soon we saw a sign for Tops Supermarket and it clicked. Oh, Tops! That's what the person was saying in their upstate New York accent. Tops sounded like Taps to Jen. Just go to Taps. <laughs> That's even the same language, just with an accent. And we got confused. So imagine when your son, wife, husband, daughter, parent, or neighbor desiring to hear words of affirmation to feel loved, but all you do to show your care is get them a gift or help them with something. It's nice, sure, but they could end up still feeling empty because what they really are filled up with is some meaningful words. Remember we talked about our love being like a bank account? We spend love from it and we have love deposited to us as well. But if we're always spending and no one is receiving love, we deplete our lives of love pretty quick. Then there's nothing left to give. So we need to keep ourselves full and fill others up. And that's what we're talking about. Is your partner's love bank full or is it empty? Is your child's love bank full or empty? What about your parents? Is that full or empty? Uh, is your best friend's love bank full or empty? What about your love bank? Is it full or empty? We want to learn how to communicate love so that our spouses, our kids, our families, friends, that we all have full banks. We also talked last week about how Jesus sets the example for us on how to love people well. If God is love, then Jesus is the example of that love, the living embodiment of love. So we can look to the Bible for great ways to love, uh, and our words are no exception. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat its fruit. So our words are powerful. If we love to speak hurtful words, words of death, destruction, anger, hurt, pain, well, that's the fruit we're going to eat. That is the reality we'll experience. You know, I can't think of anyone who would say that they would want to experience those things. But if we speak words of life, care, kindness, affirmation, truth, these are the words that will allow us to experience goodness. Speaking words of affirmation will give us lives that are filled with good things. You know, in our day, cyberbullying happens a lot, and that can have devastating consequences. This is bullying that happens through technology, like social media sites and texting apps. Suicide is one of these horrible consequences of cyberbullying. Cases of young kids committing suicide as a consequence of cyberbullying are increasingly coming to the public's attention. These are words simply typed on a screen, not even verbally spoken, and they rob the emotional bank of someone's love. These words steal, kill, and destroy, just like the Bible speaks of Satan, the enemy of God and of people. It's interesting to me that the first words that God spoke to Jesus were words of affirmation. In Mark chapter 1, verse 11, it says, A voice came from heaven, saying, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Those are very powerful words. The Father says to Jesus, the Son, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. I don't think that God said that for show. I think he meant it. I think he said it because Jesus needed to hear it. He needed to know as he began this ministry of, uh, to people that his father loved him and was pleased with him. Those are words of affirmation. This is a huge way in which God speaks to us. As we practice listening prayer, which is you know taking time to hear what thoughts come to our minds when we pray and asking God, uh, asking God questions, 
uh, and reading through the scriptures. One major theme of the questions we should be asking is for God to affirm us. Asking God things like, what do you like about me? Uh, and if condemning and guilt-filled thoughts come, that's not God speaking. There's no condemnation for those who are Christ. So ask God, who did you make me to be? What are my strengths? God is longing to speak words of affirmation into your life. So don't reject them. Welcome them as truth. One of the first times I heard the audible voice of God was a word of affirmation. I had asked God how he saw me, and I heard the word verbally, strength, whisper to me. And I was dumbfounded because that is not how I would define myself or see myself as a strong person. I was focused on all the weaknesses in my life. But God wasn't focused on criticizing my weaknesses, but drawing my attention to the positive thing about me. Many of us are starved for this, and, and we long to have someone speak words to us that build us up. Many times a person can become a workaholic because they simply are looking for words of affirmation. Someone to see all their hard work and all the time they're putting into stuff and say, hey, good job. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 says, Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. This is one of those verses that hit me in the face when I was like 15 or 16. I realized how much of what I said was hurtful. Maybe it was because I didn't feel loved, but whatever the reason, I wasn't going to rationalize it. I wanted better. What should come out of our mouths? Only what is helpful. Helpful, not harmful. So what would be helpful? Well, God tells us words that build others up. Words that mean, uh, that meet their needs. Words that benefit those who listen. So I want to encourage us with some ways to speak love to those people in our lives who receive love through words of affirmation. So here's a few. Complimentary words and appreciation affirm our love and care for others. So verbal compliments or words of appreciation, they're powerful communicators of love. People never tire of being praised or complimented or thanked. When someone praises you, you probably modestly say, oh, that's not true, or stop. But inside, you're probably saying, yes, keep it coming, I love that. Mark Twain said, I can live for two months on a good compliment. That means six compliments a year would have kept his bucket full. You and I probably need more than that. What are some words that mean a lot to you? I asked some of the people in our church and community and here's what uh, I heard them say. Things like, you are awesome. Thanks for watching my kids for me. You're a great friend. This tastes great. You're a good listener. I really like the way you, and then fill in the blanks. Verbal compliments are far greater motivators than nagging words or words of criticism. Compliments put deposits into a person's love bank. Nagging criticism drains these people who thrive on words of affirmation. So finding ways to compliment and avoid harsh language and harsh tone is so important. Every criticism is taking a withdrawal from that person's bucket. In fact, it could be putting holes in their bucket that will need some great repair. I said to the kids the other day, you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. And Jen said, what are you, 85 years old? But it's true. I've heard this excellent uh, advice uh, to husbands. Try praising your wife even if it does frighten her at first. <laughs> it may not be your natural tendency and not the norm, but remember love is a choice. It shows you are choosing to give love in a way that another will hear it and understand it and receive it. If my attitude is, well, well, people just need to know that I love them and if they don't accept me for who I am, then um, they don't love me. Well, how much love is in that thought? Let's remember that love is patient, kind, and it's not proud or rude, right? So if I wanna care for those people around me, I need to work at it. I'm much quicker to criticize people in my family for ways that I'm disappointed 
them for expressing appreciation for who they are. That needs to change in me, and I'm embarrassed to admit that. I can't focus on the negative and assume they already know the positive. What would happen to the emotional climate of your relationships if your partner, your kids, your friends heard compliments and appreciation regularly? Encouraging words are another way to show love and care verbally. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11 says, Therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are already doing. See, encouraging words are another kind helpful words. To encourage means to inspire courage. All of us have areas in which we feel insecure. We lack courage and that keeps us from doing what we really want to do. A few encouraging words at the right time can make all the difference. And there's a difference between encouraging someone to do what they want and pressuring someone to do what you want. I'll give you an example. Maybe if you want you, uh, your partner to lose some weight. But if that's what you want, it's going to feel like pressure, not encouragement. So when your partner wants to lose weight, then you can encourage him or her uh, by saying things like, um, if you decide to do that, I know that you'll do great. Or, one of the things I love about you is that when you set your mind to something, you can succeed. See, that's encouragement, and that's going to fill their love bank. But saying, well, saying really anything other than encouraging what they desire, it's going to feel like pressure. Phrases like, I believe in you, I'm so proud of you, you're doing a great job. What would happen to the emotional climate of your relationships if your partner, your kids, your friends heard encouragement regularly? You know, challenging words are also a way to verbally affirm. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 6, it says, Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. An enemy multiplies kisses. What that means is that they just flatter you. But a friend tells you the truth, even if it hurts. But friends know how to do that with love. See, you can tell the truth in a way that is hurtful, or you can tell, uh, tell it in a way that is challenging and uplifting and encouraging. I remember talking with my mentor and friend, Dr. Olu Peters, and uh, was writing a paper for him on the book of Corinthians in college. And he visited me, and uh, he said he graded my paper. I said, oh, how, how did I do? terrible he said I expected much more from you well I got a B <laughs> I was happy about that but then I thought well he expects more from me maybe I could do more so you can tell the truth in a way that is hurtful or you can tell it in a way that's challenging and uplifting and also because I trust the person that's challenging me and where the challenge is coming from uh, I can be inspired by it the next time you feel you need to confront or correct someone you love, stop and ask yourself how can you challenge them to grow rather than just scold them for failure. What would happen to the emotional climate of your relationships if your kids, your partner, your friends heard affirming challenge regularly? And I want to give one little warning here. When we use words of affirmation, we need to be authentic. A person whose love language is words of affirmation can spot a phony. In Romans chapter 12 verse 9 it says, Love should be shown without pretending. Hate evil, hold on to what is good. So there's no need to just make stuff up. Love is not pretending. I've had my fair amount of confrontation with this. So Jen makes a meal that I don't like. She says, I'd appreciate it if you tell me you liked dinner but I didn't like the dinner. Do you want me to lie? You can imagine how that conversation goes. So what did I appreciate? Well, I appreciated that she took time to plan meals for the week. I appreciate that she grocery shopped. Uh, she made the dinner so that I didn't have to. Did I express any of that to her? No, I did not. Is it true? Absolutely. 
So I can authentically say I really appreciate that you organized all these meals for the week and you got everything that we needed. We shouldn't value politeness at the expense of truth, nor should we be honest at the expense of unkindness. So respectful words are important in speaking words of affirmation. 1 Peter chapter 3 says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. You see, love makes requests, not demands. This is especially important in close relationships. Demanding things of your partner or your kids can be demeaning and it's going to drain their love bank, especially if their love language is words of affirmation. Requests, on the other hand, affirm another person's worth and abilities. Requests are affirming, demands are demeaning. Requests give guidance. They say, this is what I want or what I need. Demands give ultimatums and merely drive people away. I've learned this because my wife's primary love language is words of affirmation. Even with my kids, not that we don't have to require things of our kids, but I get a different response from my kids when I say, I need your help to clean up the yard, as opposed to get out there and pick up your toys. Requests respect the other person's right to make choices. People around you may choose to respond to your request or deny it. Love is always a choice. Love can't be demanded. We all have things that we want others to do for us, but we need to learn to ask in a respectful way, and it's going to fill up other people's lives. What would happen to the emotional climate of your relationships if your partner, your kids, your friends, your neighbors heard respectful words regularly? So here are some practical suggestions for speaking words of affirmation. First of all, if this is your primary love language, don't be afraid to let other people know it. Tell them what you need. I need words to encourage me. See, I'm kind of dumb, and so I often forget the very simple, obvious things, and so I tell my wife, Jen, please just tell me what you need. I'm going to forget and overlook it. So ask Jen if her reminding me that words matter takes away from the value of the affirming words that I speak to her. Uh, so she lets me know. So that's the first practical suggestion. Tell people what you need. They love you, but probably need help knowing how you want to be loved. So be sure to tell them. So Jen tells me. I don't have that issue with my daughter. She just tells me because she wears her heart on her sleeve. Uh, but my son, I have to keep encouraging him to assert himself and speak what he is thinking, what he's feeling, and what he's needing and wanting. Secondly, if this is not your primary love language and you're not good at it, start practicing now. If you were learning a foreign language, you might keep a notebook in which you wrote new words that you're learning. So you might try that for this. Watch and listen in conversations, in TV shows or movies, in books or articles. Look for words of affirmation and then write them down uh, if you're looking for ideas. Or just sit and think about what kind of things you think your partner or your child or friend might want to hear. Or ask them to tell you. What could a person say that would make you feel cared for and important? Ask the people in your life this question. The other day, my kids described me as special, <laughs> and that made me feel good. Become a collector of words of affirmation, and then practice and practice and practice. My wife says she likes it when I say, you look nice, or when I give her a well done just for about anything. Thirdly, you can magnify the effect of affirmation by saying it in public or saying it to a third person. You know, I can often get an insight into others' lives by how they speak about the people that they care about. If someone is always joking about their pestering kids or their nagging partner, it makes me think it must not be much different when they're at home. So praise your partner in front of others. Practice it, practice it, practice. 
so here's your first assignment. Don't go to bed tonight until you have said a genuine word of affirmation to someone in your home. A genuine word of authentic encouragement, a compliment, appreciation for something, and respect to your kid, to your neighbor, to your friend, to your partner, to your parent. Let's go for it and speak love through words of affirmation. Let's pray. God, we recognize that words are powerful and there are people in our lives, uh, or we ourselves, who feel loved and cared for by affirming words. So God, for those of us who words of affirmation is our love language, I pray that you would give us the confidence and the boldness to be able to share that with the people around us to say, this is how I need to be loved and cared for. Could you speak those words to me? Uh, that uh, we would have the confidence to do that. And for those of us who this is not our language of love, it's not the way we normally show care, would you help us to put in the intentional work to be aware uh, that we could um, discover words of affirmation, that we would be able to uh, know them and think of them, recall them and speak them with authenticity to the people that we know it matters to. Uh, so that we can show love and, and care and see people really working and living and thriving in their best possible way. God, give us what we need to love with words and help us to remember that the words and the tone in which we speak words really are important. So we confess uh, the times where we have uh, lacked that. We confess the times where we've used tone that has uh, brought harm to a person who speaks words of affirmation. Uh, we pray that you would um, bring change to us. We thank you for your continued love and speaking affirmation to us, that you don't focus on the negative. Uh, you just continue to point us to the positive, to the good, to the life-giving, healthy words, and challenge us to move forward. May we do the same. Help us to not dwell on the negative, on the criticism, and expecting things to get better through dwelling there, but that we would be affirming and that we would speak words that are positive and encouraging and challenging and respectful. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Have an awesome week.